friends, how's everybody doing today? Today I'm going to be working on something a little bit different. I'm wanting to do uh, several projects that help build my stash so that I have things to pull from as I'm working on journals. And this particular idea has been in the back of my mind for a little bit and I'm, I'm wanting to get to work on it. So what we're going to do today, I think you can see from my note here, <laughs> we're going to make generic bases. So tags and journal cards and things like that and I want to just cover them with kind of generic backgrounds so that then I can pull them from my stash and decorate them more as I work on certain journals. So let me show you what kinds of things I have. What I have here are gathered all kinds of little uh, bases that maybe I'm not going to use. These were some cards from Camille's theology class so you can learn some theology terminology while we cover them up. <laughs> I've got some just plain, uh, some of these are kind of aged, little index cards, and then some coffee dyed ones. I've got these little um, art cards, and then I've got uh, scraps of coffee dyed file folder. These were from a Christmas Eve service a couple years ago, and their church then was going to get rid of the pile, so I have a stack of those I can cover up and then old recipe cards just anything that's kind of a lightweight card stock and instead of trashing it I can just cover it and then the kinds of things I want to cover with are old book pages maps scraps of this that and the other um, anything that looks interesting or has kind of a generic design so recipes music book pages that one is a Shakespeare so it's kind of a good way to use up scraps. This came from a book, um, an old craft magazine called The Work Basket. So anything that just has kind of an interesting background design, uh, more small print, just because uh, the size of these, you're gonna want something with a smaller scale to work with. And then I have back here, I've got wallpaper, an envelope, um, a crossword, I mean just all kinds of things and then Christmas wrapping paper and tissue papers and things so obviously we're not going to use all of those things today but these are the kinds of things I want to use in the background. So before we get started if you want to go in and grab some things and craft along why don't you do that and then we will get started in just a minute. Okay, so when we get done, we are going to have a couple things that look sort of like this. These were just scraps from that file folder. Now, I, depending on if I decided to use this as a pocket, I wouldn't worry about this, but if I decided to use it as a tag and slide it into a card, then I would cover the back or cover over this part where the label was. It got ripped off, but this would make a great pocket. This would make a great tag. And I also thought about doing some of those double journal cards. Uh, they kind of wrap around. So I've got a couple of old um, programs from church. I don't know why I grabbed these other than they were sitting there and they looked interesting. So hey, free paper is free paper. I, I snagged them after church so everything had been handed out. Anyhow, this is, uh, like I said, it's just kind of a basic project, but it's a really good way to just have things ready to go to decorate when you want to work on a journal. So maybe you don't want to do all the decorating right up front because you don't know what kind of journals you're going to make yet, but you want to have the bases prepped so you can grab and then embellish. And I'm going to work on a few of these and then after that I will see how much time we have left and maybe we will embellish a few. I pulled out some laces and things, but um, we'll just see how much time we have, how far we get. Get your coffee. Get your tea, get everything, you know, get yourself situated. So the first thing, uh, what do I want to work with first? What have I been itching to work with? Well, one of the things I've been itching to work with, I've got this one I really want to use. I've got some map page. And this one I kind of think would be better, better going vertically. I really, okay, I'm just going to start with something that will cover this so that the print doesn't show through. And I think this will be my, this will be my first one. 
Now I'm going to just use glue stick and I'm gonna come right out first of all and say I'm not a huge fan of glue stick because I don't think that it holds very well. Um, but for this, I've got one of these that's new and one that's used and I can't tell by the weight which one is which. I think I'm gonna go through a lot of glue stick so I brought a second one over. Okay, this is the one I'm currently using. Maybe they're both new, I don't know. They feel kind of new. What was I saying? Okay, so I'm not a big fan of glue stick. Partly because when I was first scrapbooking, I used a lot of glue stick to glue things down and after a period of about 10 years, all those pages, all those elements are falling off the page and I have to go back and restick them on. But glues and things have improved, so we'll just see. But it's also a very nice way to adhere paper to cardstock. So um, I'm using the Elmer's Craft Bond Extra Strength glue stick. It is a permanent bond. Oh, I do need, I need a mat or a glue paper. This is just one of those cheapo craft mats from the Dollar Tree. So I just need, you know, if the glue runs over, I need to have a place that will catch it, basically. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to town. We're gonna start gluing. I also have this other little glue stick I'm trying to use up. I know a lot of crafters like these and I know Pam at the Paper Outpost, this is her favorite brand, but ugh, I just find it too sticky, too gooey for me. So it's not really my favorite. I hope this doesn't shake the camera too much. Um, I'm going to take advantage of the crease in this card and the crease in this paper so they can line up a little bit. And then I guess the other thing I should do is make sure Make sure that uh, my pattern is straight. I did not grab a wet wipe either. Kind of forgot I might want one. Okay, let's make sure that the pattern is straight. Now the pattern on this is a little blurry, so if that looks blurry to you, it's because it is. <laughs> no need to adjust your screen or check your glasses. No, no. <laughs> It really is. So a little bit of the book page shows through, or the print, I mean. I don't think that's really a big problem. I don't think that's gonna bother me too much. So if we put that on the outside, let's, um, I'm gonna do some tearing. Cause it's a little bit easier than working around the cutter, working with the paper cutter, but I do have the paper cutter over here from when I want it. I think I can just tear this and it should line up okay. I could be wrong, we'll find out. I watch everybody else tear things on screen and it looks pretty cool. Yeah, it didn't. I guess maybe the moral of the story is either tear it from this side or tear it before I glue it down, but then then the edges are wacky. Yeah, not sure tearing's working. I was thinking it would be faster than cutting, but I think my tearing skills need improvement. So what is everybody doing today? What are you guys working on? Are you just trying to get your get your uh, stash built up or do you have a specific project or what you doing? Yeah, I'm trying to work a little bit smarter and have a few more things prepared. I've been doing a lot of cleaning out and um, reorganizing what I've already organized. <laughs> But I do that because sometimes you just forget what you have or sometimes you get more. And I had cleaned up Christmas and thrifting trips and different things and um, just kind of identified some stuff that I really wanted to work on and then also identified what, how much I really have. And I really don't have that many things. I did find a big stack of things that similar to this I've made the base, but I haven't, I have not decorated them yet. And so I put those in a separate, um, separate container from the ones that are all done and ready to go. And I think that's going to help me as I work through things. 
Okay, so I am going to ink. I don't always ink everything, but I think with this edge here, the way it's showing, I think it would be smart to do that. So, And this would be a good project for adding a little gold paint around the edge, which I don't, I don't have ready, so I don't really want to do that on camera, but this would be this would be a great project for that because there's a little bit of gold in the paper, and this is a Christmassy, Christmassy or naturey. It could go either either way, kind of paper. It has a design, you know, that could be Christmas or it could just be nature themed. And um, when there's Christmas, I like I like to gild it. I've noticed I like to add stickles and gold or silver metallic paint <laughs> to things when when it's Christmas, but I don't I don't tend to use those when I'm making other kinds of things. Okay, so this one's gonna fold around this way. <clears throat> now we wanna put something very basic on the inside. And I think what I want, let's see, I don't have I don't have one for writing on other than this one. Oh, that just fits, doesn't it? You could do that. And then the green kind of goes with the green and then the brown lines. So, that's cool. Okay, let's do that. My husband is downstairs making stew. Um, he's using a recipe that he saw on America's Test Kitchen, and it's called beef and vegetable stew, or beef stew with vegetables, or something like that. Beef and roasted vegetable stew? Anyway. <laughs> beef stew with vegetables, I think is what it's called. And so it uses, um, of course, potatoes and carrots, but it uses parsnips. Wait, are there carrots? Yeah, there were carrots. And then parsnips and kale, which I'm not, I'm not convinced about that. And then um, peas, which are not my favorite, but not too many peas. Cause, um, I do know that peas add a bit, a good flavor, though. They add kind of a depth of flavor. So luckily, it only calls for like a half a cup. So. I'll let that slide. <laughs> and it has mushrooms and onion. What was the other thing? It's got some thyme and some parsley. And then of course beef. You use a chuck, chuck roast, I guess. And I usually buy mine already cubed at the grocery store, but he, he cut his, he made them into very large chunks, but it smells really good what he's doing. Now this one I may sew around. Um, just seems like it might want that. But the other thing I wanted to add in here, see I got a spot here. The other thing I wanted to add was a pocket that goes across the front. A decorative pocket. I don't know, let's see what we got. I need one that's long enough for starters. Let's see. I'm just shuffling, shuffling through my papers. No, you're not long enough. But that's the right idea. Oh, here's a nice dictionary page. Oh, look at that. That one's also just long enough. Nice, okay. So how tall do we want our pocket? I'm folding it in half so that it's a little bit reinforced. There we go. I think what I'm going to do since there's that little bit of edge showing, is I'm just gonna go ahead and trim it. Trim both sides so they're equal distant. Equidistant, there's a math term for it. Yeah. So that both sides are equal, is what I'm trying to say, so that when you have the fold, it's in the middle. I feel like I'm botching this. I'm not doing a very good job here. There we go. A little bit all thumbs. There we go. Weather outside. I don't know when you're gonna see this, but while I'm filming it, it's definitely winter. And we're having 
cold gray yucky skies, which I just hate. You know, I'm gonna trim this too so it's even. Maybe I should just do that. Might be the better way to proceed. There we go. Yeah, that works better. Anyway, it's cold and gloomy and gray and yucky. We're having what's called an inversion. And all that means is that what happens here, I don't know if it happens in other places, but what happens to us a lot in the winter is the air just gets kind of stale and stagnant. And then um, I think I want a wider, wider angle. I like this punch because it has three sizes of angles on it, of corners. So depending on how how tight you want the corner, you can pick you can pick whichever um, corner you like. So I think that's kind of cool. I've been watching people use these for years, and I finally just bought one a few months ago. So a couple months ago. So anyway, back to the inversion story. Fascinating, I know. Um, the, the cold air gets trapped below the warm air, so it's icy cold down here, and we have this ugly, gray, yucky cloud cover, and then um, the warm air is gliding around on top, and up above those clouds, it's nice and sunny, but it's just freezing cold down here on the ground, and sometimes it gets foggy, and ugh, it's just yucky, and it's no fun. So anyway, I hate inversions. I dread inversions. Uh, there was that one year we had it for like 44 days straight, just cold, gloomy, and and the sky is gray. It's not even cloudy, and it's it's almost as if there are rain clouds up there, but it's just it's just this gray yuckiness. So anyway, I hate hate inversions with a passion. But I told myself I could live through one this year because we have better lighting in our house and <laughs> it would be fine. I could survive. Okay. Now let's put our pocket in. I want to put it about this far up. And I'm going to need wet glue for this. I think I really do want my art glitter glue to do that. This is because I didn't smooth that out. I've got a yucky crease right there. All right, here we go. So I think what I'm going to do at this point is just do speed up the camera, do some speeding up. <laughs> Um, and then you can just watch me make and create and then I'll s slow it down and come back and we'll decorate for a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is just trim up that dictionary page a little bit to make it fit the double journal card here in the background. So when you see me going off screen, that's what I'm doing is using my paper trimmer. Then we'll just glue this down, kind of tacking it together, those two layers on the dictionary page. And I use the two layers just to give it a little more strength. I think I already said that, but um, it just helps that to be a little more durable when you're taking things in and out of the pocket. And then later I will go and sew everything down and make it look all pretty after this session is done. I just, I'm gonna go around a few of these items on my sewing machine. I tried tacking it down there in the center just a little bit with glue, but it really didn't stick, so. Then there's still just a little bit of overhang here with that dictionary page off of the side, so I'm gonna have to go trim that off as well. Right here, as I was trying to trim with scissors, eventually I came to the conclusion that I would just trim with my paper trimmer off screen anyhow because it just gave me straighter edges. The cutting, I just felt like I kept cutting and cutting and it was never quite straight. So I like the cleaner lines. Now I'm going around the corners here with that corner punch. And it was not working very well because of the wet paper. It still had the glue on it a little bit and it was just not making the corners round. It was giving them kind of a weird 
weird little edge there. So I switched over to the Creative Memories corner rounder that you see here. It's a little more industrial, a little more heavy duty, so it gives a better, cleaner punch and it was able to go through all the papers with no problem. A little bit disappointing, but that's okay. Live and learn. Uh, it would have been better if I just waited till it till the paper was dry and then the other one would have worked just fine. And then here I realized that I did not ink the edges of the of the pocket there, so I'm gonna well I am inking all the way around because all the trimming took off the ink and then I'm gonna go back and edge up the pocket here in just a second. Nice. Now I'm going to grab out a few more things to cover. I'm kind of just looking for things that can be tags or pockets. All of these have a blank side on the back, as you see there. So I only have to decorate the one side. That way if I use them for journal cards, I don't have to put some kind of writing space on the back. Now I'm just selecting my papers. And of course that did not go on straight. So now I have to go back and I'm adding a little more glue just to make sure it really sticks, but it didn't go on there very straight. So I'm, I'm reapplying, reapplying the paper to the music. In a little bit, I decide instead of trying to trim up each one of these individually, just to lay them all aside and do all the trimming at once. So do the gluing in one step and then do all the trimming in one step. It took me a little while to get my process going. And I'm just deciding what I would like to put on each tag. Tag slash card. Later on off camera too, when I go back and do some more of these cards, I switch from the glue stick to the wet glue. I'm not sure which is better, to be honest. I felt like the wet glue gave it maybe a little bit better adhesion, but the glue stick is definitely quick and fast. So on those that I'm gonna be sewing, I'm, it's fine, I guess, to just use the glue stick, but on the other ones where I wasn't sure, I went ahead and switched over to a wet glue just so I knew that it would stick together because I don't really want to sew all of these cards and tags just maybe some of them this is a little leftover scrap of an Edith Holden book page and then I'm deciding which piece of map would look better on there and I want the one that has more of the um, more of the roads and the actual map than the other one it had kind of an index at the top Now I've got three more bases I'm going to lay out and picking my papers again, who fits on what, which shapes fit together the best. Those two pages there are book pages that I had used underneath when I was inking and because it was distress ink mostly that I was using on top. I went back and just wetted them down and then played around with using the Distress inks and oxides on my mat and water and came up with some of those really pretty color combinations that you saw there. Now I'm using my friend, Mr. Sanding Block. I'm gonna use him on this recipe card and then you'll see me use him again a little bit later because this is a little bit glossy and so I just wanna make sure that the glue sticks. And then I wipe, wipe it down with a wet wipe because there's all that dust and then I go over that because you can't glue on a wet surface so then I go over it with a dry rag to to kind of dry it off really fast. The paper that I'm using here is this really gorgeous tissue paper that I got just uh, recently at Christmas time. It was in a gift and so I snagged it because it's so pretty look at that. So I thought that would make a really nice base on a tag.
And then this one I am trimming up right now because I have to put a back on it and you can't see where to trim around the card if I have both sides covered, so. There you see I just grabbed a piece of blank paper. I have a bag set off to the side where I've just got blank pages and things that will be good for backing tags. So that's what I'm grabbing from to back all of these. That one there is just a piece of random coffee dyed paper. And I'm going to trim it up and go around the corners with the corner bounder. And again, it's doing the thing. <laughs> doing the thing where it's not punching the corners very well. So at the very end, I go back over this with the Creative Memories punch again. I do, however, I'm, I'm just gonna say because I was using this on wet you know the glue makes the paper wet so because i was using it right after i glued that we are memory keepers one was not working very well but had i waited that punch would have been just fine now this is a piece of card and i like the back because it has a fleck in the paper but you'll see at the bottom it had that branding strip so i needed to cut that off now i can go ahead and cover it but the paper on the card was really pretty so i that was from one of the christmas cards that i had cut down and it wasn't glossy, it has a matte surface, so it'd be easy to write on. I'm a sucker for pretty paper, what can I say? Mr. Sanding Block is coming back out to, to rough up this one. At some point I'm going to have to toss him. I've been using him for a while. It's like one of those little um, buffers that you get when you go and get a pedicure and they had given it to me. It's been great for crafting, but it's about on its last legs, so then I'll have to figure out something else. I just like it for the petite size. It's very handy instead of having the big sanding block on your desk. This one I'm going to use some wallpaper and I'm trying to place it because on the left there, my left right now, there was a gummy sticker from the Goodwill store and it kind of was gunking up the paper. So I was trying to avoid it. And then I was trying to use that straight edge there to line up the card so that I knew the pattern was reasonably straight. See, now I'm getting smarter. Gonna let it dry for a minute. Finding my backing. Another good source of backing material if you're wanting to have plain papers for your backs but kind of get that aged look. I will save the the blank flyleaf pages from books when I'm taking them apart. And those are usually really nice for just backing onto cards and tags. They make a nice writing surface. Usually they're kind of have that aged look to the paper. And they're usually just pretty clean. They're, they're just a nice source of blank. Uh, blank paper that has a really nice weight to it as well so don't throw them out again using my two straight edges to line up the card so that I don't know I I grew up you know sewing when I was nine I learned how to sew and if you if you learn that first, they teach you all about not wasting the fabric and how to lay everything out so you have the least amount of waste. And that has carried over into my paper crafting as well. So you always see me as much as possible trying to, trying to lay everything so I have the biggest scrap possible left over after I trim things down. Now we're just going to go around and mass trim everything in one single step, all these that had the blank backs to them. Cutting this one into a tag, it's nice, sometimes it's just nice to have a long skinny tag or a big wide tag and then it's also nice to have the little size tags. 
Now I'm trimming this and watch what I do here in just a second. Because I decided to trim this down into a tag, only I didn't look at the front. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, don't you? I was pretty sure I did it right. There we go, rounding the corners. I like to round the corners on the bases of my tag so they slide in and out easier into the pockets. And what? I did the wrong side. I put it on upside down. <laughs> well, I didn't put it on upside down. I just trimmed it without looking. And can I just say that even though I made that mistake right here later when I was going ahead and doing some more of these cards, I did it again. You would think I would have learned, but no, I kept trimming off from the back side and just assuming I was right way up on the other side with the papers. And I wound up doing it again a little while later. So I guess the, the moral of this story there is to double check your paper and trim it from the front side <laughs> so you know that your tag is going to be the right shape. I could have trimmed it down into a journal card, but I really wanted it as a tag. So I decided to just leave it. Oh, now my creative memories punch is not cooperating either. There we go. I think it was getting full. It has like a little stopper on the back and the reservoir fills up. So if it's too full with all the clippings, then it, it doesn't punch very well. See, I was trimming that big piece there with the cardstock, you know, the one big recipe card. I trimmed it down into two separate tag shapes. So now I'm uh, going around and trimming it up to make it look like a, like a tag. Well, I made one a tag and one a journal card because one was slightly wider than the other. The options are endless. There we go, that's that stack and now just double checking what else I've, we've assembled here. I was trimming around the edges of that music piece there, that journal card with the music on it off screen. And now I'm going around and just cleaning up those corners a little bit with the Creative Memories corner rounder. All right, so as you can see, we have a nice selection of journal cards and tags and I got this one upside down <laughs> I guess the moral of that story was to double check before you cut your end I mean I got this one right but I don't know I just assumed I had it right way up I guess and then this uh, double journal card with the pocket here uh, when I sew it I may um, just sew right down the middle here too so I haven't quite decided if I want to decorate up or not because I'm really short on time now or if I should just do another one and then maybe decorate them in a different session because decorating takes a while so we have these two as well that we can be doing I didn't do any pockets so how about we just do another couple here and make them into pockets these guys oh these could be double journal cards too I didn't realize those were doubles Okay, let's do a couple of these. These were, um, I was printing uh, old Bible onto cardstock and then coffee dyeing it to see if it would work and it doesn't work very well because my ink runs, but, um, so I thought they would, since they have blank backs, we can cover up the fronts. So what have I not tried that I really want to use? I haven't tried, I haven't done the sewing paper. And um, this one is like a legal from a law book, which basically looks like the same thing when you put it on here. <laughs> oh well, this one, okay. Let's continue on really fast. I was having troubles with the corner punch because the glue and the papers were wet. And um, so anyway, the, uh, the We Are Memory Keepers ones was not having good success with the wet paper as much. This is Creative Memories and, you know, of course you can't buy these anymore from Creative Memories, but I buy I bought mine on eBay. Oh, look at me making a mess. So anyway, you can buy them on eBay and um, they are pretty industri pretty heavy duty, very durable. So, oh, 
Do I want the bigger patterns on this side or the littler? I kind of like all the detail of the smaller ones. The other thing that I, would, I need to make sure of and that you should make sure of is that this is going on straight. So that makes a difference when you turn it over. And am I straight? I can't tell. I feel like I'm all thumbs today. I probably am. Let's see. I want to go ahead and glue around the corner any or around the edges anyway because I don't know that I... I mean, this would probably wind up in a sewing journal, so I guess it makes sense that you would sew around it, but just in case I don't. There we go. That's better. I know I watch all these YouTubers, and they're just like whizzing along and I feel you know and they'll they'll do all this stuff and then it's only been like 35 minutes and I don't feel like they're all thumbs like I am but to each his own <laughs> I can't get all stuck on that or else I'll never I'll never try right so and of course with experience and practice comes comes better techniques so I'll let that one dry for a sec while I do this one yeah, so I think maybe I'll do the decorating in a different session because that also takes time. And um, as fumbly as I am today, you know, we're just tempting fate at this point, I think. Well, I'm just not even getting that on the edge. Okay. I like the look of this old law book. It's very brittle. The pages are extremely brittle. I think it was from 1800s and something, late 1800s, maybe early 1900s. Uh, my friend Carol and I went to a meeting of the uh, local chapter of the Button Club. <laughs> that was a couple of years ago before COVID started shutting everything down. Um, I say a couple of years ago, so 2019, which now is almost two and a half years ago. Anyway, one of the really nice ladies there, when she heard um, Carol did all the arranging and she had seen them at a, um, like a craft fair, art show kind of thing, they had put up a booth. And so she signed up and she told them what, that we like to make journals and use our old books. And so one of these very sweet ladies brought each of us, because she knew that we were going to be there, she brought a law book for each of us, one for me and one for Carol. And so... We were each given this antique law book, which was astonishing that she would even give them up. And I think they had belonged to like somebody in her family at one point, which she didn't really have a use for them, but she was very excited that we did. Now for this one, I think I'm going to trim it down just a little bit more to just get the script, the, the printing. I think I'm having better success trimming this up on my trimmer and getting it, getting the edges straight than I am with cutting. So yeah, they, that was the nicest group of ladies, let me tell you. They were just sweet, sweet people. And if I needed another hobby, that would be a really good one to have. We learned a lot about buttons and how to store them and all that. And anyway, it was really interesting. But that's where I got these law book pages from. But I don't need another hobby. <laughs> Not at all. Okay. I'm going to trim this down. There's my, there it is. Yeah, I kind of got in my groove here and realized that just glue them all down and then do all the trimming around. It's a little bit more efficient. It's actually not, it's a pretty quick process. It's just me being all thumbs on the video didn't really help. Okay, so yeah, see here's how this one turned out. I said I was gonna make it a pocket, so I guess I better do that. Although, I struggle too with the sewing around. Should I make you a vertical pocket since the design is vertical? Why not? I struggle with sewing around the opening when I do these, when I punch it out. It is what it is, people. They didn't teach me that in 4-H, no. <laughs> they told me never to sew on paper is what they told me. <laughs> that was a bit of a problem. Okay, this one counts as a tag. There we go. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna continue gluing and stuff off camera 
and do a few more of these and then we'll pick some favorites and come back next time to, um, I'm arranging my shot for the thumbnail here. <laughs> And then we'll pick some to come back and um, decorate. Let's see. How's that look? Does that look like something? Looks like something, all right. Not something good. There we go. Okay. So let's take a second and read our quote for the day. Reading from Patches of God Light. This book, I have previewed it before a few times. All right very fitting for today. I'm all fumbly fingered. <laughs> but the quote is by Moliere and it says, the greater the obstacle, the more glory in overcoming it. That's true. I feel like I am very quick to give up often on things that are a little bit hard or just to discard that, um, discard the effort and just give up and not not keep trying. Like I, I, I think that's a little bit societal as well as partly my personality, unfortunately. And so being reminded that it's okay to fail and to try again a few more times and then overcome, persist, that's, um, that's an important uh, character quality and just a basic life skill. You know, life, I'm picking at my desk. I don't need to do that. That's an important character quality, an important life skill is just to learn to, to um, continue on even if things aren't going quite as you expected. And perhaps maybe the expectation at the outset was unrealistic that you would be able to accomplish a task or something as easily as you just thought you would. So let me read that again because I really liked what he said. The greater the obstacle, the more glory in overcoming it. All right, so as we work through the week, overcoming obstacles and, and working hard on things that don't go quite right, I want you guys to continue being creative, to be inspired, and I will talk to you in the next video. Yeah, I said my quote wrong. Let me say my quote again. So be inspired and do something creative today. I'm going to continue working off camera and make a few more and in the next video then we'll come back and decorate them. All right, talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.